वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स नाउ द नेक्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ दिस टॉपिक मेटल कटिंग वी आर गोइंग टू सी इज द मशीनिंग सो इन द मशीनिंग वी आर गोइंग टू सी फर्स्ट द मशीनिंग टाइम कैलकुलेशन पार्ट ओके फॉर द वेरियस कटिंग ऑपरेशन लाइक फॉर प्लेन टर्निंग फेस टर्निंग मिलिंग ड्रिलिंग फॉर ग्राइंडिंग एक्सेट्रा सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ नाउ द मशीनिंग एंड हियर द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू सी द मशीनिंग टाइम कैलकुलेशन मशीनिंग टाइम कैलकुलेशन सो लेट अस टेक द फर्स्ट ऑपरेशन दैट इज ए टर्निंग ऑपरेशन और प्लेन टर्निंग ऑपरेशन वी टेक सो से हियर इज the cylindrical bar is given for us for this turning operation okay say this much length we are going to machine and tool is having the position at here okay so of course this is the approach for the tool and if the tool is having some over travel after completion the machining so this is the over travel ot okay and the diameter of this bar that is original diameter is d and say after the machining or after having this first cut so it is going to reduce to the diameter say d if it is not given then for the speed calculation for the speed calculation of this uh, job okay you can use the uncut diameter for the speed calculation because you know that the cutting velocity is what pi d n divided by 1000 which is in meter per minute but when you calculate n it is equal to thousands times we see divided by pi d so here d you rather take this the uncut diameter d should be the uncut diameter that is original diameter or if the next diameter is given so after uh, the first cut so you can have this diameter as the d original plus say d after cut divided by 2 you can take the take the average value also okay but generally you can take this uncut diameter for the speed calculation okay now we are interested to find out what is the total length traveled by the tool say it is equal to capital l so if i want this total travel length of the tool so it will be equal to what this length of the machine part in that plus approach if given plus over travel isn't it so these are the optional things see if it is given then only take otherwise you can direct have this small l as a capital l okay once you get this length you have this rpm of the spindle okay with which the job is rotating and if you have this speed given to this tool okay we are very much clear now f1 is, is our feed per tooth f2 is our feed in mm per revolution and f3 is our table feed which is simply in mm per minute so instead of this f2 you can directly use the f3 also if the direct value of f3 is given instead of giving the n in the question you know that what is f3 it is f2 into n so what is the formula for the time calculation so how to calculate the machining time so i am talking for so for the single cut what is time so the time for a single cut i can write this length of the tool travel that is total length of the tool travel divided by this table feed which is in say this is in mm table feed you know that it is in mm per minute so ultimately what you will get the unit for the time is minute 
or you know that the F3 is what? F3 is given by F2 into N. This T is also is equal to L divided by F2 into N. So this is what? Mm divided by Mm per revolution into revolution per minute. So you will get here minute again. Okay. So this is the time per cut. Okay. Time per cut. And if you have the number of cuts, then multiply by the number of cuts, you will get the total time. The total time. That is time per cut, which is L divided by F2 into L into the number of cuts. So in this way, you can able to get the machining time. Okay. So this is the first thing. Now here, so the second condition if I want to take, that is if I want to have the phase turning operation, I want to have phase turning here then what? The tool will be here now. So in this position tool is here. And this is the fit direction. Isn't it? And this is say depth of cut is nothing but the T1. And width of chief is equal to depth of, sorry, is equal to width of cut that we know, we have seen in this oblique to orthogonal cutting of uh, analysis. So here, the tool, the movement of the tool will be up to what? Say if D is the diameter of this cylindrical bar, then D by 2 is the tool movement. Isn't it? So only the thing is that the time per cut you can have is how much? L divided by again, this F2 N to N. Okay, but length of the tool travel is how much again now? For the facing operation, up to the center tool will go because it will take the radial cut, isn't it? So length will be what? This D by 2. Length will be what? This D by 2. And if you have want the approach and actually approach only, all travel no need directly up to center, we can have this entire face. This is the face. You can go with the tool okay so tool is here so go up to this the entire face is going to have the facing operation isn't it so if you have you can add the approach if given otherwise length is d by 2 divided by feed into the n you will get the time in again in minutes so this is for the second case you can have for the face turning operation face turning operation okay now say third case on this lathe machine I am having again the taper turning operation taper turning operation so you can have the various methods you can have the compound uh, rest method isn't it you are having special attachment for the turning uh, taper turning you can have the form uh, form taper turning tool isn't it so then set over method so these are the three four uh, methods are available for producing the taper on the uh, given workpiece on the lathe machine isn't it so let us here we are going to find the time which is required for taper turning so let us see how much it is the third operation on the lathe we are going for the taper turning operation Okay, compound slide, then we are having the offset method or set over method, we are having form tool, okay, for producing the taper on the given workpiece on the lathe machine. So here we are going to find the time, say let us see that we are having this workpiece, cylindrical workpiece of course, and now this is the tool okay we are having here and this is the depth of cut is taken for the of course taper turning operation number of cuts we are required it is not possible to have the operation the entire operation is single cut so of course step by step we have to go so say if this is the depth of cut is a d1 max and please remember for every cut we are having the same depth of cut so we are getting here the first 
for the first cut we are getting this value this is nothing but say theta isn't it okay so this is the value of taper angle theta so here say for the first cut so the length of the cut is this say l1 is the length of cut and angle which is taper angle produced is say theta and what is the depth of cut is given as d1 max or we have chosen this d1 max as a depth of cut so again here tell me like that we are going on the number of cuts to get the required taper on the component say this is length l1 then next cut it is l2 next cut it is l3 like that and every time the angle is taper angle is going to be same say it is theta and it is a theta okay now here we know that how to calculate machining time is equal to l divided by f2 into n so f2 and n is of course there the spindle rotation will be there and the feed given to the tool is there now this is the question of this length so how much length you are going to machine in every cut in this taper turning let us see so if i write here say sine theta for the first cut cut i am writing so what is that so this is here is nothing but this is nothing but see sine theta is this d1 max divided by this hypotenuse is l1 so this is d1 max divided by l1 so what is the length you got cut in the first cut that is l1 is equal to d1 max divided by sin theta so what is 1 upon sin theta so it is nothing but the cosec theta so this is the length of uh, cut you got in the first cut okay like that if you go for the second cut as i told you depth of cut will be same again this is d1 max so in totality 2 d1 max is the uh, depth of cut you get and here for the second cut what is length get machined that is i will write again sin theta is equal to now how much depth that is 2 d max 2 d1 max isn't it divided by length will be l2 so l2 will be of 2 d1 max into cosec theta like that you go for the third cut you will get the third length that is now the depth of cut becomes see again this d1 max then in totality 3 d1 max so 3 d1 max isn't it so like that you will get the lengths and of course the operation is going to have the number of cuts so i can write like this so this total time if i want to write it will be say l1 divided by f2 into n plus l2 divided by f2 into n plus l3 divided by f2 into n that like that how many number of cuts that we have taken so in this way i can make a common out of this that is one upon f2 into n and for l1 plus l2 plus l3 and so on what i can write 1 upon f2 n2 n l1 is what d1 max cosec theta plus 2 d1 max cosec theta like that plus so on okay so out of this bracket also i can make a common what common thing is what d1 max cosec theta cosec theta divided by f2 into n into bracket 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus so on isn't it so what is this nothing but what this is natural number series isn't it no d1 max cosec theta divided by f2 into n into bracket what n into bracket n plus 1 divided by isn't it so this is nothing but what hmm? the total time the total time required for this taper turning operation where where n is what the number of cuts 
n is what the number of cuts okay so this is how and even max is what this is the depth of cut for every cut of course f2 is the speed in mm per revolution and n is the rpm of the spindle or the chop so in this way we can able to calculate the machining time for taper turning operation on the lathe machine okay thank you